everyone, this is Ben back with you in the Midwest Mall Shop. Sorry it's been a while. Uh, this winter got a little bit away from me so far. Had to do a lot of traveling work, etc., etc. Anyway, uh, this episode we're going to go ahead and put together the rear funnel for the USS Missouri. And I've had a few requests lately to show me actually assembling some of the parts, some of the techniques that I use, and I thought this would be a really good um, section of the ship to use because the uh, funnel, rear funnel is not particularly complicated. So every little detail and thing that I do uh, is basically what I do all the time when I assemble any part of any model. So it all gets covered here. Uh, and even though it's not a particularly complicated piece, it looks really cool when it's done, especially because the radar and mast and all that look all fancy and everything. But it's just a few pieces of photo etch glued together, really. It's not, wasn't that difficult to assemble. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to try and put links in the description down below of all the generic stuff that I use. Uh, tweezers, just get your favorite set of tweezers, pick out whatever you like, sanding sticks, glue, uh, all that stuff. Um, nothing too complicated. Hopefully what you see is that my techniques are not particularly earth shattering and if you can master them, uh, you can put together anything you want to. The big thing is just having patience and I realize that that's easier said than done, but uh, yeah, that's the whole thing here. So anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and show the assembly of the rear funnel. Um, I'm going to share some techniques that I use for building models along the way. Hopefully uh, you learn something and feel free to comment, shout out below uh, if you have any suggestions. I know there's some things that I would have done completely differently now and changed up the order of operations. And uh, if you have questions, feel free to ask because this is a really good community out there of folks who um, are full of great ideas and are willing to share their techniques and suggestions. And that's, that's really what I like about all this. So anyway, without further ado, it's enough talking. Uh, let's start the uh, build. So first order of business is cutting out our parts and uh, we need this rear funnel piece right here. Uh, I have a pair of uh, cutters that I use and my technique, just whatever you guys do is you know fine, but I like to actually come to the sprue and get close to the part, but not exactly right on top of it. Uh, not right up to the piece. I leave a little bit of a nub left over and I go ahead and I just cut it off like so. So <clears throat> as a result, you should be able to make out there that we have an excess of uh, plastic on there that we then, especially up on the front here, that we have to remove. And the reason that I do this is I don't want any uh, tear out when I cut it with the cutter and have an indentation in the plastic. I still want to retain the smooth edge. And if that gets torn out and it's visible, you got to fill it with a little bit of putty. It's just an extra step. So I try to save that right here. So for cleanup like this, you could use um, you can use a knife and just be careful. That works really well. But I also like sanding sticks. Now everyone, you could use whatever sanding stick you want to use. I don't um, advocate anything over the other. I'm just sharing what I use. I like to buy these variety pack sanding sticks that are about one eighth of an inch or three mil, two to three mil wide, sometimes even narrower. And uh, this is the black one. They're color coded. This is the coarsest one. This leaves very aggressive scratches. I almost never use this thing. Then we have the blue one, light blue on the bottom, and it's a darker blue on top. This is my bread and butter for cleanup. Um, I usually take off with this. This is about a medium grit, probably. I'd say about 150 grit sandpaper is about what it equates to. I will use this to take off the big bulk of things right here first. It will leave uh, scratches that you can see and are fairly aggressive. And then I'll follow up with the medium or lighter side, the lighter blue. And this is getting way up there. This is probably like an 800 grit sandpaper at that point. Uh, to smooth it off. Now what the difference is this will leave scratches that you could see to the eye in here uh, but once you hit it with an airbrush and you paint over it the scratches disappear. That saves me the step of having to go to the white colored uh, sanding stick which is your finished polishing buffing stage. Um, I And this has two grits too this one side just feels slightly more aggressive than the other and you can use you know start with the more aggressive one this one and then you'll end up with a super smooth finish 
but that's a lot of monkeying around for something that I think, in my opinion, will be taken care of with some paint on the airbrush when you're done. Uh, but we'll just start with this. Like I said, you could hit it with a knife, but I'll take this and I'll just run it down like so. And this way, and they flex, which gives you a little bit of control for the contour. You can see what you're doing. And take it down to the edge there where you start getting scratches on the area outside of where you were working. So that part's gone. Then I'll switch to the lighter blue and just drag it along that edge right there. And this works really well also for just like knocking off little bits of flash. I'll use the light blue for that all the time. And boy, I hope that was in the shot. But there you go. Sand it off like that. Now, as far as glue up goes, uh, primarily on this build, I am using Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. I do advocate this. I'm not sponsored by Tamiya, but <coughs> feel free to send me some glue, Tamiya. Anyway, um, this stuff's great. It's applied uh, with the brush like so, and it's extremely runny. Try not to knock the thing over. Uh, this stuff works just like the tester's paint um, that you might have started off with or still use today which is right here, sorry I had to dig around for it. Uh, I started off using this one as a kid, the fumes will give you a buzz. Um, but the way this stuff works, this is a slow setup, it's a medium viscosity, but you put this stuff on and what it does is it actually melts the styrene together. Uh, unlike using uh, your, whatever your variety of um, cyanoacrylate that you prefer to use. This is obviously I picked up at a local Bob Smith's whatever place. This dries like an acrylic um, and is basically just a bond between these two things which is why you can debond it and take it apart. Once you use the Tamiya or the testers on this and it is set up you're not going to just take these apart without physically cutting into the um, plastic that holds it together. Uh, considerations, this piece drops in on the top like so. Let's zoom in here. <clears throat> and it just sits on the top and these, there's like three, three little tabs right there. And you, it's so thin, you can just take a dab of the glue on the brush and drop it in the top there and you'll be fine. A consideration though, if you're using something thicker, if you look on the back side right there is the seam joint where they connect. So you could take your glue, you just dip it in the brush and just run it like so right along there. And then you're going to have to, of course, while keeping it in the shot, do the other ones. And you've got a little bit of working time with this as well. Like that. And it's runny. So it runs all along the seams. You just drop a dab in and, I mean, that's, that's actually a lot right there. And it'll run in there and then... Um, just let it sit for a couple of minutes and it will melt that piece to that piece and you'll have a solid bond and you're ready to go. Uh, that's how I glue stuff up most of the time. If I'm using the testers, which is thicker, um, I don't know if any of you have used this. It's a lot thicker. I'll use like a tooth, toothpick to apply it. And same thing with the cyanoacrylate. I use a toothpick to apply a very controlled amount to the area that I want. This will be using all of the time on the... Um, Photo etch because, of course, photo etch, you can't be melting it. It's it's metal. So let's get the rest of this glued up. But anyway, that's how I glue things in case you're curious. All right, we're at our first major, uh, got to make a serious decision with the rear funnel. Uh, this piece goes on right here like so. If you're using the kit part, you just glue it in like this and you're all done. Uh, the Pontos instructions has us remove this entire grill and then insert a new smaller photo etch one. We're going to be doing that. The thing is, uh, with this measure that we're doing, I think it's 22. I don't remember the number. 21, 22. Uh, this side is the um, light goes gray that we all are familiar with. And then up on top here, 
this all gets painted flat black except for these little little auxiliary stacks coming out of the inside here according to my reference photos those were not painted black uh, and then a little bit of the black comes down there's this hairline edge that goes and wraps right around here now the reason I say we got to make a decision is let's take a look at the Pontos instructions uh, let's see here right in here is this is probably a good shot all that photo etch we're gonna put on there there's that handrail that goes in place and then down here there's additional handrails that get in place you are going to have to mask this if you're going to airbrush it and not screw up all your photo etch work that you put in place and you need to decide how best to do that what I am going to do is cut out and install the photo etch brass for here on the top so that we basically have this whole section done just like you see here and I'm going to paint this entire inside black then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this and paint it the um, light ghost gray, which is actually, I keep saying, our French light blue gray is the color we're using Model Master Paint. So that it's in place and it's painted. And then I'll go ahead and attach the brass photo etch on top because I'll be able to control, I can either touch up with a brush, the brass that I'm installing along here, or just hit it very carefully with an airbrush uh, with minimal masking and risk to upsetting the photo etch that goes around uh, here and we'll have all of our parts black so order of operations is important and this is why you have to study all the instructions ahead of time so until then though uh, let's get this all cut out cleaned up we'll get the ring glued into place everyone knows how to do that and then we'll start attaching uh, the photo etch uh, here's our photo etch we got a cut out these pieces and these pieces right here. I like to take a piece of glass. Uh, you can use or use like a piece of granite tile. You know, just go get a little square at uh, the store for a couple bucks. Something hard. Careful the grass, the blast, glass sorry, can break and you can end up with a sharp edge. Throw it underneath there. Um, I like the round blades and sometimes I use a straight edge but just go right up to where it's got its little nib and push down on it and you can take it loose like so just make sure you cut in the right spot and there you go that's how you get your little piece of photo etch out um, obviously this will put some wear and tear on the knives I have a little sharpening stone that I use and I'll just run the knife along here every once in a while that's what all the black marks are and it'll put an edge right back on it um, and then as far as cleaning up any burrs on your photo etch I go right back to the same sanding sticks that I showed you earlier uh, they work out fine it's just brass it takes a second and you clean it right up but anyway that's how I do that there we go we've got the photo etch on up on top uh, around the funnel everything's installed basically that nice handrail and everything that you see there um, so now is the time to go ahead and get all of that painted black in this whole area right here including this handrail that we put inside and then uh, that lip we're actually just gonna follow this line right there right around for my reference photos that edge where the funnel pieces on up is black and then this whole area right here is the gray so we could just mask right, right along here easily without disrupting the photo etch and get the black in place uh, and that'll work out uh, order of operations though now that I'm talking out loud we actually want to paint all of this the gray first and if you get gray over spray in there no one cares then go back mask along here and we'll get the black in place and it'll look alright uh, as far as putting this photo etch in it's just like doing styrene small tiny parts except it's with super glue uh, I use this messy little piece of cardboard I put a dab of super glue down um, I grab a sharp toothpick I transfer a tiny little bit I put it where I want it and then I set the piece down. It takes practice, takes steady eyes, steady hands. I guess 
eyes that could see in steady hands, right? Uh, and then you get in place. So anyway, let's paint this. Whoop, let's paint this gray. And yes, I drop things. Let's paint this gray, uh, and then we'll mask around here. We'll get it black, and then we'll put it together. That piece inside there, I'm gonna have to double check. I think it'll end up staying black, um, or I can paint it gray if I want to. But the, the those three holes in there, those are extra funnels. Those. Are, from what I could tell, they're gray coming out, and then you have the black top. So I'm going to do that just because it also adds a little bit of interest to this area uh, visually. So, yeah, paint. There we go. We got some paint on, and as you can see, I went ahead and started with the uh, photo etch railing that goes around the front there. This is a little thing you climb up on and uh, go up here and service the funnel. Uh, I do want to get these little funnel pieces in there um, going next and so I grabbed the next part um, as you can see I hollowed it out I just used a drill bit start with the big one got the initial bell shape done and then ran a smaller one down there I'll just paint all that black the outside will be gray and we'll put it in place and it'll look good um, not sure about that center one right here I gotta look at my reference photos I don't know if this should have a divot in it or not. Uh, i got to look into that before we get going too far here. But, yeah, so it's painted. And as you can see, uh, we got some of the next photo etch on. I'll get the rail in place, and then we'll put it on the um, funnel. Actually, I might, I might glue this. Once I have these pieces in, that's what I'll do. Once I have these little funnel pieces in the back, I'll glue this whole thing onto the main part of the stack. That way I have something to hang on to while I go ahead and work with the rest of the uh, photo etch on there. So let's press on. So now we've attached the top of the funnel, the base of the funnel I guess is what you could say. Uh, I went ahead and painted up the other little stacks coming out of here. I put holes in them. Uh, so I've got pictures that show these pieces is being gray inside. I've got some pictures showing them clearly painted black. I think the idea is that if you look at it sideways like this, if they're protruding out sideways, you would see them as gray. This is in the 1945 scheme. Later after the war, from here on up was all black. Uh, but what they, what my references photo show is that at an angle from here down, following the angle of the stack up is black. Uh, with the exception of those pieces, but I left them just because it's nice to have something to stick out. All right, anyway, uh, we got some more of the photo etch on. There was nothing tricky about this. Um, all this stuff has pretty flat pieces or surfaces that you can just go ahead and dip in a little bit of super glue and set in a position. They stay where they need to. So now we need to uh, add some plastic parts here and on the other side. And then we've got photo etch that goes together underneath here. And what will happen is we'll start working our way down. We have ladders and stuff. But then we also have to build the um, antenna structure that goes up. So this has been great so far because I could just hold this and turn it around, spin it, and do whatever I need to do. Um, so what I think I may do next is get this photo etch underneath here installed. So you can see it glue on these plastic parts so that they're in place. And because most of this gets painted black with a combination of uh, gray, uh, we may airbrush all this and get like, we'll just call it like a primer coat down here. I'm not sure yet. Before I do the ladders. Uh, and then we'll have to start working our way up. So that is the next step. I said we'll, we'll do this stuff underneath here and then we'll start going up. One more quick little pro tip. Uh, again, plugging the Tamiya thin paints or thin glue. Sorry. So you see the little seams we got there, and there's a little bit of flexing going on. I haven't I haven't glued this piece in yet. I've just uh, set it right there. But remember, I said before that the way this glue works is that it melts. I'll keep it in the picture here for you it melts the plastic together and what I like to do is get it in place and hold it 
so that the glue takes and holds. But you see how we have that seam right there? And it kind of is obnoxious. Obnoxious would be nice if it was filled in. Once this glue sets up, I'll fill in some more, uh, or flow in some more to me a glue. Just like this. And what it's going to do is melt the plastic on either side and when it sets up and dries you'll have this very nice filled in seam that when you paint over looks absolutely fantastic so anyway that's another reason why I like to use this glue and I thought I'd share that uh, before moving on sorry about the furnace it's just it's cold outside alright here we go alright quick little section on railing here I've had a couple people ask me about installing railing they said they've had a lot of trouble and everything like that um, so, w w the one thing that I do is I, f I treat the edges of the photo etch to adhere better. So what I want you to do is notice this piece I'm holding here, how it's a dark brass color. There's nothing shiny on it, alright? Now let's take a look at this one. Note that bright edge right there. And note how there is not a bright edge up here. What I did is I treated this bottom edge of the rail that's going to be my uh, glue down surface what I did is I flattened it out with a sanding stick uh, there is just the tiniest little bit of a rounded edge on these pieces of course I can't pick anything up here just like this in my hand here so what I do and yes you do have to be extremely careful Hold it and I use my sanding stick with the light uh, blue side and I just lay it perpendicular flat and I just make a nice little motion like this, very little pressure and look, see that gold edge that I produced there? That is now flat, there's a little bit more of a flat surface there than on the top here that you see. So when I set my piece and dip it in a little bit of super glue and then I set it down like this to glue into place it will adhere better so anyway that's one of my tips uh, let me go ahead and get this little section installed alright we've reached a point or stage if you will uh, I've got almost all of the photo etch from Pontos on the lower part of the rear funnel the exceptions would be here and here uh, same on this side go two big brass uh, grill plates and I'm holding off on those because what I want to do is paint this entire thing paint this black inside here put the photo etch on and then go over the top of it with um, the gray on the outside and that will give us a nice little see-through looking little area uh, some things to note about the Pontos let's zoom in here so this ladder at the top is supposed to stick out on the front of this um, ledge. If I had done that though, the bottom would not have reached the back of the funnel structure at all. So uh, the top piece just wasn't long enough and it looked funny. So I just went ahead and snipped it off, ran it up underneath. Then I also trimmed very carefully and sanded the bottom there so that this piece will sit and I don't have to, I can move it and not worry about uh, it snapping off because this is a construction consideration. Also back here, so see the little ladder rails, the rungs going up to each of these little stations right here. I drilled those out, installed them first, then this tall ladder, then I placed um, the photo etch railing along there. I think this is a hatch. There's a piece of photo etch on the sprue that looks like it would go on there and cover it nicely but I can't find that in the instructions so uh, I'd like to put it there and I think that'll probably take place in the next um, probably next shot I'll, I'll figure that out uh, this ladder in the front I'll zoom out a little bit so same issue with it up here at the top focus there you go uh, it is supposed to stick out proud of this, but if we did it, then just like you see up inside of here, it would not have touched the body of the funnel, and then we would have had a fit issue. So, And it actually tips up enough in the front there that, as you can see, there's no problem. Uh, we've got some stuff going on there. 
that's neat to look at. Here's our ladders and our little railings so we can go along and expect the top of the funnel. All right, now let's talk a little bit about back here. I stopped at this point. I have these two pieces on the side installed and I have my little, um, I don't know what you want to call this antenna here, but we're going to start with the mast. So that's going to be a major construction project and from I can tell in my reference photos, if you follow this angle oh, straight across, from here up would be black, from here down would be the gray. So from there up also on the mast uh, is going to be black. And so I'm going to make that a separate assembly. And what I want to do is actually go ahead and paint all of this the gray. Um, I'll probably paint the weather deck blue in there. It would be nice if I could get it around this step area up front here, but I've already installed the railing. I suppose I could snap the railing off, paint it, and then put the railing back in and have it be the right color, but honestly that's just a lot of monkeying around that I don't think is necessary. So we're going to get this all painted up and then uh, we'll go ahead and work on assembling the mast and I will try and show that assembly process as much as I possibly can. So let's head off to paint. Right, so we got to take this piece, fold all of those sections straight up. This is the little cap. Oh gosh, it goes on top of it, and then it's supposed to slide down and stop on that nub right there. Uh, now there's an orientation. These two slots are really important uh, for two support bars that basically come off at an angle like this. But since this thing's round, all we gotta do is slide this on, get it in place glued, uh, and then when I install the mast into its seat, uh, we can work on the orientation later. See there, it kind of takes care of two birds with one stone. Right? Now all we got to do is uh, take that out of there and sh uh, shore it up, get it plumbed up the rest of the way and slide it onto the mast. Alright, so here's the next issue and y you know, I mean, whatever, you're going to run into this type of stuff. According to the instructions, this should drop in and rest right on top of that uh, notch right there. So we'll just drop it down and yeah, it's short. I thought uh, we could go ahead and I'll like, well, I'll just flip it over upside down, right? We'll just take the top ring that I can't seem to pick up while on camera, put it up there and we could drop it down too. As you see, it stops short also. It actually stops, as far as I could tell, exactly where we want it to. Which is nice. But what do we do about the bottom here? Uh, so we're in a situation where I need to hollow out the inside of that circle a little bit. That's going to be extremely difficult to do, an extremely fragile piece. Uh, we are going to be much better off taking some sandpaper, I apologize about the focus, and just taking off the most tiniest bit of this ring here so that it drops down all the way. So I'm just going to grab a sanding stick and work that around, and I'll be back in a moment. Alright, so this is some tough stuff to do all on camera, but uh, you can see the light area there that is cleaned up just with the um, sanding stick right here and I just took some very light passes that's all it really took we'll grab our little piece there it is it goes right to kind of where we stop and it takes a little bit of twisting and boom I'll zoom in it's a little bent up and everything but uh, as you can see 
it stops right where it needs to. So we'll put a little piece of glue on the bottom there and lock it down. And then, I mean, none of these things are lined up right, but then you got to take the other piece and apply it. There it is. It's going to slide down, and it's going to stop exactly where I need it to. And now all we have to do, if I zoom in a little bit more there, uh, you can see there's notches and everything. I just got to line all that stuff up and glue it into place, and we'll have that piece set. I'm going to do that off camera because this camera is directly in the way of everything I'm trying to do. Uh, but you guys see what's happening there with the assembly, and then we'll have this nice little piece put together. All right, so I got that piece put in. Uh, let's zoom in very carefully there. So you can see there's an orientation. Sorry, the furnace turned on. And that is so that these two rods in the front have those little slots to sit in, just like that. That's what they are supposed to do. And then these sit right on that little piece, and this is what you end up with. It's mostly straight up and down. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, so right up on top here, though, goes a crow's nest looking type of thing um, that then has a little mini radar on it. So now that the orientation's right and we know which way everything goes, I'm going to use these two front oriented looking little positions to say that's the front and that orients everything to put these parts on the top, which I'm going to do before I secure all of this into place because I think it'll be easier on the assembly process. So let's work on that. Alright, I guess the first tricky part's over and that's making this little crow's nest basket type of thing. Um, it's, it is difficult to roll around and glue together in the middle because the bottom has a lar smaller diameter than the top. But there is an orientation on here. So I've got it figured out. I'm going to go ahead and just dip the bottom of this thing in super glue and very carefully set it on top there. I said super glue cyanoacrylate cyanoacrylate it's it's super glue but it's acrylic also so there we've got that seated um, we'll let it dry for a second and then I might add a little bit more uh, supporting bits of super glue around it then we got some parts that go off of it and then we can go ahead and slide it onto the top of the mast right here it slides down to this notch and stops and then there's a radar piece that we got to make that goes on top of there so let's do all that all right there's our little piece made up and this side is the back that goes aft and if we look here on our uh, mast Hopefully that focuses well enough for you to see. There's this little rectangle and that little rectangle. So this area we're looking at here is forward towards the bow. So there's one, two, three. This center post right back here, we want to center up with the back of this. It goes up on top and it rests on this bump. So we'll just put a little bit of glue right there and then slide that on place in place. And then uh, there are a couple of very teeny tiny uh, support brackets photo etch that go underneath this whole thing that will get installed as well but you just want to get a little bit of glue on there and two three we'll take this and it slides right down there to that stop and let's make sure we get centered. Check our, try and keep it plumb here. There's not a lot of glue holding that in place, so if I need to change its orientation a little bit here, I will. That's pretty locked up. All right, just like so. Now, um, there's two pieces that go underneath here, like little brackets, and then on the very top, we got to set up our radar. So, I'm going to get those two little pieces put on, and then we'll get the radar next. 
All right, we got our little piece right here. This is going to make the radar base that goes on the top. And all we got to do is bend it. It's actually a simple piece, just two folds. Lock it in. Look at that. 90 degrees. Let's flip it around and get it locked in. Whoa. Sometimes you can tighten this up a little bit, make the piece easier to slide in to get exactly on the line. And I'm, you know, the camera's in the way and the legs are in the way to the camera stand and normally I have everything positioned so that it's super easy to do this. There we go. Like so. All right, now this is like a little radar return receiver and then that these two pieces form the back of uh the actual radar dish itself, which is this piece should fit in the shot right there so I have to bend that and in a curve and we'll do that real quickly here all I'm gonna do let's see here make sure you guys can see this uh, I'm gonna take my exacto knife blade it's pretty big make sure this isn't the shot flip it around so I don't cut myself but I'm gonna lay this piece right on top of it like that and just bend it with my fingers just get a little radius going it if I heated it up uh, it would work a little bit better uh, let's see here yeah that's not gonna be aggressive enough so now you gotta look to other things I have um, like my little exacto or my little law uh, drill I can roll it around I just smash it in with my fingers and roll my thumb over it like this and that helps get you there we go it's a lot better a nice little curve let's see yeah that's in there so now we just have to glue this uh, in place on the back of that radar and base and put it in so let's do that alright there's the base uh, I corrected this I guess this is, you radar guys will have to tell me, I think this is the part that sends the signal to the dish to be reflected out and then when it bounces back it receives it. Anyway, here's our our dish. Uh, let's see, we'll grab a little bit of super glue on toothpick here and just get some really right on this back side here and then a little bit on the bottom because there will be contact there don't need a lot and then we're gonna grab our piece center it up and let it lock into place like so uh, from the angle you guys are at, you probably can't see that centered but it is that looks good we might put a little reinforcement drop on the back let's take a look at that see if I stab it like this turn it you can see that uh, yeah, it turned out nice so when that glue sets up we'll go ahead and stick that on the very top of the mast and then we'll have our radar piece and we'll be ready to go Okay, now we're going to try and do this without making too big of a mess of things. Let's see what happens here. Get our super glue. And grab our little radar. There's a hole that it uh, drops down into real nicely. So it's just a matter of making it stay in place. 
until the cyanacrylate sets up. And I think we got it. Alright, sorry about that. The dog walked into the uh, stand while I was videotaping, but there it is. That's the radar installed. And so now, I think we have enough in place that we can go ahead and... Move that for you. Uh, we can go ahead and install this onto the main part of the funnel. That'll hold it together so we can work on the rest of the mast uh, that goes on across right here. Because there's ladders and things like that that go in place. So well, let's attach that to the rest of the, of the funnel. Okay, here's the whole thing uh, roughed into place. Well, it's glued into place. And then we've touched up some of our black paint. Uh, it's still wet, throwing some weather deck blue in there and painted these little sections black. They get um, photo etch thrown over them and then we'll do blue on top and then I decided yes I'm gonna throw that door there because I think that's the right spot for it. Uh, so we'll let this stuff set up for a little bit and then the next part is to assemble this mass section that goes in right here for the for the radar. Um, I'm going to do that off camera and just get it installed so you can see everything. It's really difficult to work with the photo etch and keep the camera in a place so that you can see everything but hopefully for those of you who are just curious you know you just you just put a little bit of glue on and uh, stick things together just like it's the plastic part it's just uh, you gotta be careful about how it sets up. So anyway uh, that's going to be the next thing that we do. So we'll get the grills on paint it, we'll get the radar assembled and put on and then what we'll have to do is paint from here down the gray and from here up will be uh, black so that'll look that'll look really cool I think so uh, yeah pressing on. So there's the mast installed uh, that cross piece there for the antenna was just a few pieces he had to fold and put up in place. But what we have now are a little detail that goes right on top of those antennas on the end. They're located right down there. Sorry about the glare. It's those two uh, gold pieces. And as you can see, uh, they're very, 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 very small. So how do we put those up there? What I'm going to do is take just the tiniest piece dot of super glue. I'm going to touch it right there. Now it's focusing rough. And then uh, in order to pick that small part up and put it in place, I'm going to use a wax pencil. Uh, I've talked about these in a previous episode, but they make picking up tiny little parts like this way more easy. So let's see if I can show you how I do that. All right, so hopefully this all remains in the shot. Uh, I'm going to take a toothpick. I've got a little dab of super glue down here cyanoacrylate and I'm just going to touch it, it probably isn't even perceivable to the stopping point right here on our antenna just to get a little glue on there it doesn't take too much okay so what I'm going to do now is take the grease pencil touch the edge of my part hopefully that shows up line up the hole Boom, drop it down into place, make a little adjustment to trying to get it plumb, there we go, and yeah, it sets up, and that's it. Um, it's, there's just got to be enough glue there for it to stay in place. I mean, you can't go running around crazy with it or anything like that. Uh, what's going to happen is when we apply airbrush the paint to it, the paint's going to add another layer to secure the two pieces together. It's going to be like another little bonding agent. So there's the there's the other one. Make sure it looks pre plumb And that's it. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Zoom in. There you go. Those two little pieces right there. So that's how we install those. So anyway, uh, the secret to that, like I said, picking them up is using this, uh, it's just a, a wax pencil, sorry. Um, 
I got a pack of them on Amazon. I'll put a link down below. There's lots of little solutions like that, but that's that's a, another how to do thing right there with Photo Etch. All right, as we move on with painting, uh, we've got these grills that I showed you earlier. I painted the back side of this black and then threw the photo etch on top. The idea though is I want the black to come through the holes and the photo etch obviously needs to be uh, not <laughs> gold. So I prefer to paint all of it with a brush so I can lay it down flat like this and make sure that I just get the top surface covered you can do this in a couple of passes but you don't want to fill the holes in and you don't want the paint to go through so that the black doesn't show up so just take a brush small uh, light passes just get that surface covered just like that and you get off to a real nice start you can come back some more light passes and there you go it doesn't have to be perfect um, you know these screens show a little bit of wear and tear you got a little bit of grime coming in out of them I don't know if these are air vents I don't know if uh, they're exhausting something or if they're intakes but anytime you have air moving over a surface from outside to inside or inside to outside you're gonna get um, some fluctuations in colors and contamination so anyway that's just uh, our initial pass but you can see there how it starts to look um, like an ice cream the way that you want so anyway we'll let that dry up we'll put a couple more coats on we got to do all these other ones and continue on with the painting process there all right so uh, went ahead and we got the black paint on uh, the antennas and kind of touched some things up a little bit and looks good uh, we gotta do some weathering things like that so now uh, we have these six little details right here go some spotlights uh, those are the kit provided parts right there they're just two pieces um, they're nice they have decent detail on them and then we have the uh, cover that goes on top it's going to stick together like that we'll orient to the bolts so I'm going to paint that up uh, I'll probably just hand brush it with the darker gray to set the contrast and then it'll get a weather wash and it'll look good and then uh, as far as those two spots I believe we have two gun directors that go right here uh, I'll double check and then those will just come from like the last episode out of the veterans models kits because they look good so we'll get those put in there and then we'll do a wash next so let's make all that happen alright so I dug out the little pieces that come in the veterans kits uh, the directors I got them painted up here we're doing our RAF medium C gray just to give them um, sorry get it focused here some some contrasting color we're gonna stick with that theme uh, and, and then of course the spotlight dealies I think these are spotlights uh, that have covers on them um, I might be wrong you guys can just correct me in the comments anyway uh, that now the next thing is to get a wash on them I just use this Vallejo uh, wash uh, you just put a little in a cup and then kind of run everything on it so this, I'm going to let this set up for a second, but this is enamel and then this is um, water based so I don't have to worry about the two not mixing and causing one to rub off and then the other. So let's let this dry up a second and then we'll do the wash. Alright, so the Vallejo wash, this stuff, it's just basically watered down. Um, well, I don't know if it's totally true, but you could water down some acrylic paint, just thin it out like that. See how it's just runny and semi-transparent. Uh, get yourself a brush that's dry and you just dab it in like so. Alright, and then grab your piece and just dip it on there.
like so. That's it. That's all the wash really needs to be. And it'll, it'll flow around and it'll basically get some uh, grimy dirt colors in there. And then the uh, details will pop out a little bit. So we'll just do that to all the parts and then let it dry up. You can dab off uh, the excess if you want. If you don't like it, you can add more. Um, lots of detour or, uh, tutorials online on how to do this, but uh, that's what I do just to get this all dressed up. So let's get the rest done. Alright, here we go. This is our finished product for now. Uh, I went ahead and put the parts in, the gun directors, all four of them, and then the, uh, I think there's spotlights up there. Um, did a quick little wash just with the Vallejo Black. Just touched the brush in a couple of excuse me, a couple of spots and let the wash run down. It's real subtle, you might not even see it from here, but it just adds a little bit and helps some things pop out. I like that the painting the radar and the antenna black actually helps it pop out, at least right here. Um, it might disappear when it's actually on display. Let's reposition the camera here so you can take a look at things from a different angle. All right, here's a little bit more of a head-on view. Uh, spin it around. So it, it turned out really nice. Um, I think the trickiest part might have been just getting the photo etch handrails up along the top there in place. Uh, but they look really nice. Hopefully they don't magically just fall off and disappear on me. That'll be a real bummer. But they are there for right now. And hopefully it stays that way. Um, let's see here, let's just pivot down a little bit. So you can see the grills didn't turn out exactly how I wanted to on the bottom, but that's alright. There's the gun directors, there's the ladders, you can help climb up into the funnel and access everything. Access everything. Here's my door in the back uh, that I put the photo etch piece on. And I think that looks pretty good. I might clean up this wash a little bit here, it looks a little bit heavy still. Uh, but it's all, like I said, a little work in progress. And because I painted this all uh, enamel and the wash is water-based, you can hit that and it'll come right off pretty easily. So no big deal right there. There's the other gun directors. So yeah, nice piece. Uh, it's a fun little addition to the ship. There's the whole thing to just barely get in the shot. It's pretty big. There's my hand back here behind it. So anyway... I hope that you all enjoyed this, and I'm not sure which section I'm going to work on next. Obviously, there's the forward funnel, uh, there's some anti-aircraft gun positions. Um, yeah, i got to pick out what we're going to do next here. So, anyway, that's it for now. Hope you all enjoyed this. Talk to you next time.